Hi friends and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Fatmata here from Traditionally Inspired Meaningful Art. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm here really quickly, okay? You weren't even supposed to see all of this goodness yet because I wanted to wear this for this week's Friday sews. But I was about to edit my week in sewing for February 2022. And I realized how unceremoniously I began the vlog and how abrupt it ended. <laughs> so <laughs> I said, you know what, let me just pop on here to say hi and welcome. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining me. I've been enjoying the act of sharing my sewing journey and process beginning from last year. Tons of videos for you to go and see about how I'm getting on with this beautiful craft of ours and hobby. So last week i was trying to redeem myself after trying to tackle the sicily slip dress and i wanted some feel good projects and i turned to my make nine plans and selected four of those patterns like i am i went in okay with my make nine and i selected four that have really been calling to me and i'm really excited to report that i got quite a ways okay I, I did some things hope that you enjoy sort of the behind the scenes look at the sewing process and how I fit in the sewing throughout my week and weekend this was not a an average weekend so I just want to put that out there the reason why I was so excited to dig into these um, patterns is because I knew that I had a long weekend this past weekend was President's Day weekend so I had Monday off and then a really short day on Tuesday for work so I was able to spend some time in my sewing room as well as in the evenings once I put the kiddos to bed I just want to hop on and say hi enjoy the vlog and I hope that you stay tuned. If you haven't already, please do subscribe so that you can see what everything looks like and continue to join me on this awesome adventure of documenting my makes and my sewing practice throughout the year. So just in case this whole situation works, I did want to demonstrate what it is that I'm doing. I'm working with pattern S8834. Um, I had traced off the patterns and this is the pattern front usually it has a center front seam and it has like a keyhole opening i never have my keyhole opening open so what i'm doing it ties in the front i like mine to actually wrap all the way around so i make my tie section much longer than this possibly even double cutting this on the folds because i don't need that center section to be open and i am going to then cut just a long strip that is the width of this and give it a nice little point at the end as well. But I'll have ample fabric to do that with or I have a solid black rayon chalet that I have in my stash that I have here just in case I don't have enough of this beautiful one and I don't mind having that sort of as the tie that wraps all the way around. It could provide a little bit of contrast which could also be nice. Anyway, this allows me to have ample room for a lot more space like I'm not wasting all of the dead space that would be here and I thought that it would be a good idea for me to just demonstrate what I'm doing I'm also testing out shortening the bodice I remember when I made this before it always felt droopy on me and as I'm making more and more garments I always feel like the bodices are long so I tested it out here I took about an inch off the bodice both on the front and back pieces so that's folded over and i'm just gonna give it a go this time mm, um, okay let's talk about it mm, this is a really tight squeeze <laughs> i don't know <laughs> and we're making it work because we've come too far okay so here's what i cut i had cut a size oh, I miss a, part, I miss a, uh, a size 14 it appears at the Really? Size 14? That's what I did. I don't know. I cut a size 14 at the waist and then grade it all the way out to about a size mm -hmm, 14, 16, like 18. I mean, do I need that? Size 18, 46. A size 16 would be cutting it close, but I mean... I think we just gotta be cutting it close at this point. 
So I'm going to do what I can. I'm gonna cut out the front first, which is this piece here. I'm gonna flip it over just so I can get it on the fold. I am going to let you go so I can concentrate. I am going to extend mine for as long as it can go. And the reason why I'm flip-flopping them is because of course they are narrower at the waist and that's what I want. So I'm putting the narrow part up there so that they kind of just graze each other. I mean, there's going to be no fabric left when I'm done with this. No fabric left behind. Okay, that's what we're doing here. I'm so excited about this dress. Also, today's been just a cutting day. Um, after that Sicily slip dress debacle, as I am now calling it, I'm just, just falling in love, back in love with my Make 9 plan. So I have the vintage pattern. Yes, I did cut into it. Let, we'll talk about it another time. I know. And then I finally, I had to go for it. I want to see what this is like on me because I want to be happy. I'm watching the doc is hot. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to stop you there. Delicious. But... So I love this episode. If you guys don't already watch her, follow her. She's fantastic. And I love this video. It's her February plans. Any hoosers. I'm going to cut this out, finish all of my cutting for the evening. And then I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Right, so I just attached the ties. And remember, I cut mine super long, much longer than the pattern because I want it to tie all the way around, not just in the front. I decided to interface closer to the bottom because I want that part to actually be crisp as it's going to be turning and kind of tying all around my body. If you watched the first part, you should know I didn't have enough of the print fabric, so I just used solid black, which I think since it's going to be the tie extension will work. And I did not cut mine with a center seam. I cut it on the fold and I will, if I haven't already explained why I did that, but it does mean that I'm just going to actually create the tie and I'm going to get to skip these steps right here because I don't have any center seam to sew and I will jump right on to attaching it to the bodice. Hopefully if I've measured and done everything right because I removed that 5 8 of an inch for both sides here, I should be able to effectively just move into this step and it should fit neatly on the skirt piece. I'll check back in when I'm at that step. Hopefully you can see it a little bit better, but this is the skirt front and here is the bodice front. Again, it's being front seam, so right, wrong sides facing, but I just wanted to come and show you, look, the match is matched. Look, they match. Our math worked. If you are ever making S8834, please. Please, please, please. When you get to number 15, sorry. When you get to step number 15, whatever, whatever this means, okay? Please make sure that you have correctly marked one, two, three dots, as well as this fourth one on the skirt front piece, okay? Because this whole situation right here, the mental gymnastics that takes place to make sure you have properly matched the correct notches. Whew. I I had to use the the notch in the hip. That's what gave it away that I had initially done it wrong. I was like, why is my flap over like sitting right here? It should be a bit higher. And I went back in and fixed it because I forgot about this top dot. Just a word of caution. Loving this process so far, bye bye We've reached another point of change. So I wanted to loop you in. This is the back bodice piece, skirt piece. Now, this has a dart, which then aligns with the dart in the skirt. I am actually omitting the dart. So I've gone ahead and sewn both sides of the backs so you can see this beautiful French seam. Mm-hmm, peekaboo, okay. And this is what it looks like on the front side, gorgeous. I just love the feel of this fabric, oh my word. Okay, I did not put the darts in, mainly because the dress that I've made of this before, I only have one other one, I love it. And while I love the fit of it with the dart, I do find that 
if I have a really good meal, for example, right? I feel a, a bit more snug in it because it has the zipper down the back. So at no point does it give you much give. I guess if you just cut it bigger, but I'm not into that. Anyways, I'm going to omit the dart and create a casing using this bias binding. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach that to my French seam, sew it down. So it will have a slight top stitch, but listen, it's black printed fabric. I'm gonna use black thread. You'll never know the difference. Um, so I'm gonna create this casing just so it's not right up against my skin and I'm going to feed some elastic through there. And that way I get the cinch in that I want, but a lot more ease and flexibility so I could wear this garment for years to come, especially with it being something that has a zipper down the back. I don't want those to be super tight, right? Because as soon as I grow, then I grow out of them and this will give me a bit more longevity. So I just wanted to um, give you that update, omitting the darts, using the French seam to help me um, put this casing, I'm gonna feed some elastic through, and then we'll keep it going. I went ahead with a three fourths of an inch elastic instead, and I bar tacked it here and then snipped it, like trimmed inside the casing so that the, um, the elastic sits further back because again, I'm going to be French seaming the side seams, didn't want that excess bulk, you don't want that. And I also trimmed it here because a zipper is gonna have to live in this space, all right? Um, if you are wondering how did I know how, why to cut the elastic, well, here you are, my friends. I just folded the dart on my tissue pattern. I laid my elastic over it. I know that there are five eighths of an inch seam allowance embedded here, so I accounted for that and the fact that I was gonna trim it. So that's how I decided how long to cut my elastic. Um, because basically you want it to fit the way that it would if that dart was still there. That's basically what I did. Let's do the other side now and then I could put these bad boys together. All right, it's Friday guys. I just finished recording and putting up Hi guys, my Friday sews, um, and I'm back to my lovely dress. All right, I had to I had to think about it because listen, midnight meat was beginning to make trouble, and I had to come back and seam rip just a little tiny bit here while I was doing my French seam because I am French seaming right up until where the zipper is. So I have a tutorial that hopefully I'll remember to link about how to um, sew a French seam up into a an opening, right? So that could be if you were doing like a little keyhole or anything. So that's what I'm gonna do here. But before I put in the zipper, I remembered to put in my woven interfacing because I want this area to be really supported to hold that zipper in place without a lot of wear and tear since this fabric is so light. I have the front of the dress ready and kind of um, just waiting for the zipper, I want to make sure I put the zipper in and then I'm going to sew the side seams with a French seam. Pattern, but I'm just not looking with the, of the tissue paper. So yeah, so it's all water slit. That looks a fairly straightforward sew. So I've not made by a Thanks for keeping before. me company, Adele. So I made some progress on that. Gonna have to figure out the sleeve situation and the neck binding. I am left with literally scraps right now. And um, we'll, we'll talk about this. We'll talk about what G Street, what, hi, um, for you all that answered the call of whether or not I should go to G Street this weekend. I did. And uh, um, things escalated very quickly. But we'll talk about that another time. I am looking at S8742, my code again, and I started last night, and before midnight me can just start her madness, I called it quits. So, last night I was able to sew the pockets together. I wanted to show you something. So, you might know that I'm using this really amazing, I wish I knew exactly what kind of fleecy goodness this is. look at how meaty this fabric is it's incredible it's incredible this is more the true color it's fantastic but look at my pocket here is the reason why you're seeing two different fabrics and look at how beautifully i mean like i this is why i love having an abundant 
an abundant and wonderful stash at times for times like these because I have this fabric and I didn't even have to leave my home and I happen I just so happen to also have this which is a cotton sateen and I am using this for all of the facings pieces including the collar which is what this piece is right here because could you imagine having two thicknesses of this and trying to sew the seams right sides together flip it over and have all of that bunching at the collar I, I don't even know and then also look at how thick the pocket already is and this needs to now be stitched on top of you know the the coat again front like this so that would have been way too thick. So I'm using this cotton sateen, right, as all of my facing, and I'm really, really thrilled that it's the same color. So hopefully it'll seem very intentional, but it just made the most sense for me because I really didn't want to have to have two thicknesses of this for any of the places that called for facing. I've already talked to you about how thick this material is. To have a center seam, I would Hong Kong seam the insides if I were to, to do this, to have that center back seam. And I know that it provides a little bit of shaping, but I, I figured this might be the best way to show you. So I have it lined up here at the top and I used the waist line and just lined it up with one of the straight lines here, just so I can see how much I'm actually meant to take it in. So for me, the difference of Maybe that's gonna total up to, for both sides, um, half an inch, maybe, maybe half an inch, I think, is what you would get as far as like definition at the waist. And honestly, for the thickness of this, to have to then go and put myself through Hong Kong seam finishes and all of that, I actually think I'm, I just wanna omit that center seam. Now, the issue is, I think I went into the process kind of thinking that I wanted to do that. So I did cut it on the fold. However, I cut it on the fold with the pattern piece as is. I did not account for the fact that there's five eighths of an inch here. And I could just say, I don't really care. But the reason why I need to care is because I am going to need to attach and match up the collar seam with this with the collar piece and it's going to be too wide as it is right now so I'm going to sort of fold in the five eighths of an inch and lay it back down and see if I could recut it um, basically I am going to shift it down I folded over the pattern by five eighths of an inch from the top and measured it all the way down to the bottom so you can see sort of here it seems a little bit more shallow let's fold it over than it is at the top because of the part that was curved inside and I'm just gonna have to be okay with that and what I'm going to do is really I'm focused on here and around the armhole and what I might actually do is like naturally just grade it back out so that at the hip line I do have that extra space I don't want to lose that now what you'll notice is that I am going to be short on this, right? Because I'm taking some off, I'm probably gonna lose whatever I'm shifting it down up top. I'm gonna lose that at the bottom. So I have brought over the front pieces and the front facing because I'm also going to remove that length from the bottom of those pieces. Because if the back pattern is short, the other piece needs to match it. Things are lining up, I think. Packing this so that I have no center back seam might actually work. I know I mentioned that I was going to be Hong Kong seam finishing this possibly. <sighs> Am I going to say I'm second guessing that now? I don't know. I feel like top stitching, it's just a really thick fabric and I just, I don't know. If I were a Hong Kong seam finish, I guess the seams that I would be doing would be the side seams like on the actual thing because that would lay flat i don't have the center back seam anymore so not that one um it's gonna have a facing so there won't be anything raw there i guess so you'll see this much of the shoulder seam so i guess i could hong kong seam finish this, this 
oh gosh, I can't speak, the shoulder seams, but I would have to do that right now, like right, right now. And I could also add a bias binding to the very bottom hem if I wanted to, so that when I hem that up, you see it. I was gonna consider using this really, really bold red up against this, but with the bottom, I don't know that I want it to be that different. So I'm gonna try it out with a brown that I have in my bias binding stash and then see what I feel. I'll report back. Um, I prefer the chocolate against this much more than the really vibrant red. I think there are some pieces where the contrast is exciting and wonderful, but also this is a cardigan, a cardigan that will flap open. And I really don't want this distraction because this is really in your face and bright. So I'm gonna go with my brow. All right, so quick check in. I have one sleeve done this side. And I did the bias binding on the shoulder seams and the armhole, but I will say this, you see that bulge right under the arms? It's so bulky. Okay, that I don't know why I thought that you could see that. Um, it's very, very bulky. I do think that for the side seams though, I'm just gonna surge it. Like I'm not gonna add the bulk and the busyness with um, seam binding. I'm just gonna surge it. But I think I am going to go ahead and put the binding on the other shoulder seam, like the arm. I'm gonna put the binding on the other arm just because like it needs to be symmetrical and if I'm not gonna take out the other side. That's just what I need to do now. It's been a while since we last spoke, but um, I had to change the, whatever, the setting on my serger. I did not notice how wavy it was gonna be, so I had to change the differential feed, I think is what it's called, after some trial and error. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and finish doing what I need to do and hopefully Hopefully this is gonna be coming together, you all. Let's see. Coat again is practically finished. I have to figure out a situation with the sleeves. It's a really dense and th thick material, so the way that they want you to finish off the sleeve cuff is a little bit concerning for me, but I will figure that out. The dress is almost done as well. Uh, I just need to figure out how I want to finish out that neckline but it ties up beautifully and the length is like almost perfect, almost perfect. I wish it was just a smidge longer. The floor is a mess, so I'm not gonna pan down, but I've moved on. This is what my heart was singing for, S9114, the dress. And I have my directions just pinned up to my little board and hoping that it's not that bad. I really do want to try and use my serger to do the gathers for the skirt panels, which is upcoming. But right now, I'm just going to focus one step at a time. Let's go ahead. Sew the bodice together. I'm using French seams. Get the cuffs in. You know, all the things. I so this fabric is really hard to see what is the right and wrong side. And I knew, I knew this. So I thought I was being thoughtful and like for the wrong sides, I just used my little chalk mark it but I'm working on the sleeves and the continuous lap and I sewed it in the wrong way I'm really sad this is what I thought was the right side but it's not this is the right side you can see it has almost like it's not twill but that diagonal sort of lining and it has more sheen to it and the colors are more vibrant on this side than the other any hoosers um I'm not picking all of this out so all I'm going to do I had put the little V on the front by accident. I'm just gonna unpick that and put it in the back. And unfortunately, you'll have this on the front. But when it's all sewn up, that's not gonna be a worry to me. Oh. All right, so we're making progress here. Just a quick update. So I'm working on the skirt yokes. And for the back piece, they want you to cut two of this length, but I didn't understand why I would do that. Um, because it's a straight line. So I just cut it on the fold. I don't know if that was like based on how fabric would be, but I was able to get mine cut on the fold and that's one less seam that I have to French seam. For these skirt fronts, I'm gonna move forward and start French seaming this together to make one 
long panel do the same with the bottom ruffle piece i just did a tester ruffle on my serger this was double the length of the top fabric so the differential feeds and whatnot worked and it's really nice because so long as you leave a tail on the surged ends you can kind of expand the ruffles a little bit to kind of fit into whatever width of fabric you're trying to fit it into which is pretty nice so i'm really looking forward to getting this together and i think the ruffler on my serger is going to pay off big 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 um i do intend to french seam that as well so hopefully i'll be able to get a really clean french seam on that and without too much bulk because there will be quite a bit of bulk with that uh, serger thread on there but we shall see I did a snip and rip when I was cutting out this so you'll see a lot of loose threads but hopefully when I go to French seam it all of that will be trimmed off anyways and make it really neat but it was going to be a lot to try and lay out these pieces super flat and cut those out so I sort of roughly <laughs> laid the pattern pieces on top of each other and then just snipped in the corner and ripped the fabric since this is a woven. I'm not saying that I recommend that someone else do it. I'm just telling you what worked for me in this instance. <laughs> okay, so this is becoming like the bane of my existence right now. The surged edge is curling over on itself and making it really challenging. I'm using this open, I think, embroidery foot to see if that would allow me to not have to struggle as much, but it's not working. <laughs> dare i say would it have been easier to just stick with the two or three rows of basting stitches i don't know but i'm in too deep we gotta get through this goodbye look at it oh my gosh look at it oh my goodness ah, it's so gorgeous oh it's so cute Pattern calls for 15 half inch buttons. Um, that's, a, that's a tall order. Are there 15 buttons on here? One. Oh, okay, that very, very top one and then the two sleeves. Okay, anyway. So in looking through my stash, I have these two have 10 buttons. Um, I think I'm going to be using this on the other shirt pattern that I have in the works right now but yeah I only have 10 anyway so I don't think that would work out too well it's really nice that anytime I get to the button stage I can go through this like really abundant stash of thrifted finds and often I can make it work so that's been pretty cool thus far anyway I'm um, going to my other thrifted finds that I've kind of organized in here the one that I'm leaning towards I have a lot of gold stuff goodness but I feel like I have so many of these. And you know what, it has this like cream center with this gold surround. I was looking for something more matte, honestly, because I didn't want everything to be goldy goldy. But I mean, these electrifying oranges, I don't think it would be terrible on here. And it kind of picks up on some of the cream that's already in there. Like I wouldn't hate that. And I definitely have enough of it. So, I, don't know, I, might, I might use this another gold surround button but i mean that's what i like it seems that's what i like yeah i might do that so we'll see i'll have to put the button holes in hopefully it doesn't give me any problems and then take it from there all right so as you can see the buttons are on the dress is wearable and i absolutely feel fabulous in this dress uh, so I'm really excited that I went for it and decided to make S9114 the dress version. As you can see, still unfinished. That is tonight's project. I would love to be able to wear this to school tomorrow. So I'm really excited about getting this done. I just have to make a decision on how I want to finish it and do it and get to the sleeves, the neckline and all of that. But here is the back. Here is what it looks like and the ties that come all the way around and then they can pass all the way to the front. So I'm really happy that I added that interfacing it 
adds just a level of structure to this that really allows the ties to be substantial and look really neat in my opinion um and yeah i can't wait to get to this tomorrow so i am really really excited to share something else with you all this week um this is black history month and I'm really excited to use this as an opportunity to sort of dig into my own culture. My family, if I haven't mentioned it already before, is from Guinea and Sierra Leone in West Africa, and we have a rich and really inspiring sort of culture and historical background. And my husband actually is of the Fulani tribe, which is the same tribe as my mom, and they have a really unique and just dazzling history. My husband was sparked with this idea and took on the charge to actually date back and trace those historical roots um, of the Fulani tribe and really document some of those milestones and the things that the Fulani tribe were able to give back to civilization, many of which we're really blessed to have till this day. Um, and I'm really excited and really proud and honored and to share with you all that he actually wrote a book. Like it's a tangible physical thing and it's kind of awesome has some photos in there um, about some of the things that he's documenting and talking about. And when I say it is a labor of love, it's like three years of really hard work. So I know this isn't, it's not sewing related, but I would be remiss if I did not just share this with you, particularly in the month that we're in. But honestly, Black History for me is worth celebrating and discussing and talking about no matter what time period we're in um, just because it impacts so much of what we do in our day-to-day -day lives so I'm really proud of him and just wanted to share that with you all so if you're someone who loves reading about just like historical things and loves gaining insight into really new things or cultures I can highly recommend it I know that seems really biased, but I don't care. It's exciting and I'm really proud of him. So I'm gonna link it down below for anyone who would be interested, but um, yeah, we did a thing. Look, it's a book, it has his face on it. So I'm really excited about this. I know it's something that my family and I are gonna cherish forever. Um, particularly thinking about, you know, my children and the fact that they are going to have something where they can learn about who they are and um, how special we believe they are based on where they come from. So that was really exciting and I just had to share. I'm going to gush about this for the next couple of episodes. So sorry, not sorry. <laughs> when it's something that incredible i think it's worth sharing so i hope that you can appreciate that and um just you know take that for what it's worth but i had to share that with you uh, i'm really excited about tomorrow's friday shows guys i can't wait to show you in a bit more detail how these things turned out the behind the scenes looks and vlogs are really just that it's just me talking to you behind my phone <laughs> showing you what I'm doing as I'm doing it so that um, you kind of see my thought process and how I flip the script and change course based on what is happening as I'm sewing and you know we have to sort of be nimble and, and be able to be flexible in our sewing practice and give ourselves some grace so I hope that you recognize a bit of that in this vlog if you're not already subscribed please do so we hit a thousand subscribers this past weekend and i cannot thank you all enough i can't um words can't express how thrilled i am to see this community grow if you find any of the things that i share with you sort of entertaining inspiring if it brings you some level of comfort while you're in your sewing space or just as you're thinking about ways to be creative, I hope that you would share my videos or this channel with the folks in your life that you think could benefit from this, like post, share, tag, all those things. Um, because it, I mean, it means the world to me truly. So thank you so much. And for that, I would love to do a and A. I mean, I sit here and I just, talk to you all the time but you might have questions so I've already asked in the community tab and have gotten some really amazing questions so you can go to that post in the community tab or leave 
your questions at the bottom in the comments below of this video so that I can answer them. I wanna compile them, put them together, and then present them to you in a Q&A video. So, I think that's all I have to say. I came on here for like a quick chat and that turned into more than just a quick chat, so. Thanks for staying tuned. <laughs> have a wonderful day, folks. Stay creative. Bye-bye.